Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at Grand Prix, New Jersey. I am Nick Miller alongside Zach Dobbin. How are you doing today? Good, nice to meet you, Nick. Nice to meet you. We saw you a little bit a couple weeks ago at Eternal Weekend where you top aided with this very sweet Homo Raider deck. And I saw you here at GP New Jersey. We got to do a deck tech on this really awesome list. How do you come to the conclusion to play this style of deck? We've seen Tesserator decks in the past, but in the current metagame, this is what you want to be doing? This is uh, what I, going into Eternal Weekend, this is what I decided that I wanted to be doing for a deck. I've always been a big fan of the Chalice yep. decks. Um, with the meta right now, with so much uh, Blue Red Delver and Burn and all, all the powerful one drops people are doing in Legacy, if you play Chalice, you're inherently getting card advantage right yep. off of the bat. You're essentially one for 30 in some decks. <laughs> And so once you get the Chalice in play, um, you also have the Ley Line, which it's not transparent, so it only affects your opponent's graveyard. So uh, it shuts off death rights. You're only playing four fetches in the list, so yep. they're not going to get much man off of you. Uh, it shuts off death rights. You're not playing much instants or sorcery, so don't have to worry about that from death right killing you either. Their Goifs are zero ones. They can't treasure crews. Uh, against Dredge and Reanimator, they have a really tough time game once if you have that because predominantly you see Leyline of the Voids as hate cards yeah. in most decks, but we just decided to play main deck because that gives us access to the main combo of the deck, which is your helm Leyline combo. And how it works is if you have Leyline of the Void in play and you have helm, uh, you still have to activate helm for one. Right. So you still need an activation of one. Uh, the way helm reads is essentially people mill until they hit X or hit a creature. Well, since cards are never entering the graveyard, it just exiles their entire deck and you pass turn back to them and they die uh, when they go to their draw step for turn. So you're a chalice style deck, but you got a bunch of moving parts with all your artifacts and stuff. Obviously your clean kill, ley line plus helm, but you got a ton of other stuff going on. Of course you get chalice right off the bat with your soul lands, you got ancient tomb, city of traders, you can just knock that out right off the bat. But once you start moving on from that, you got a bunch of other stuff going on here. You said plan B, you got Sword of the Meek, Thopter Foundry going on. And then of course you've got both Tezzeret Planeswalkers in here for all kinds of tutor effects, and just tons of value along with Transmute Artifact to help you find all these combos. Talk about some of the little intricacies in this deck that you can do that people might not expect. Well, if you have any of your playing six uh, artifacts, uh, mana rocks and with them it allows you to go um, sometimes like you don't have the turn one chalice but you have ley line into turn one signet or something mm -hmm. and then turn two you're able to play another land uh, I call when I use a signet filtering the mana through the mill because you're <laughs> taking the colors and purifying it and making blue and black right uh, so once you do that you cast your uh, transmute artifact uh, that's what we like to call reader Whenever I cast it, my opponent's uh, picking it up, and if it's resolving, uh, you float two mana, you sack a signet, and you pay the difference. So since Helm costs four, uh, your signets cost two mana. If you have a difference of two, you pay the difference of two. And essentially, it's a fixed tinker type yep. effect. So you're sacking an artifact, finding one that you're paying the difference, and able to get. So if you're, if you have the uh, Sword of the Meek, and you need a Thopter, you can sack Sword of the Meek, they cost the same. Mm -hmm. Just blow up one of your Signets and get Thopter Sword going. Or if you need to buy time, find Ensnaring Bridge, or any of your pieces you're missing. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge is just a card that colds a lot of the decks, especially game one where they're not expecting it. Stuff like Sneak and Show just have a hard time ever actually killing you with that card in play. Yeah, uh, Sneak and Show, cast Show and Tell, and you're holding Ensnaring Bridge, put it in play, they can't, most of the time they can't beat it main deck they have uh, I believe chase most lists are playing nowadays but that's it that's their yeah. only way and they can't actually ever attack with their creatures and even the blue red delver list if you're able to empty your hand and yep. snaring bridge just buys you all the time as they have 24 uh, points of burn in most lists so and then you have chalice to deal with all those burn spells yep. and also Trinisphere. so of course, you got a little bit of value going on with Baleful Strix as well, like Plan C and D. You get to start using those guys in conjunction with your Planeswalkers. Yeah, uh, uh, Little Tez, the Agent of Bolas, um, 
He's the homie planeswalker in the four drop. He gets the plus, finds your pieces to look at top five, put card in your hand. Uh, the minus, you can make your Baleful Strixes into 5-5 five, five. at Eternal Weekend. I was uh, very aggressive with my Tez, making 5-5s five, and attacking, and sometimes most decks in Legacy are ill-equipped to handle a 5-5 five, five creature that's attacking them. And then also the ultimate, you count your number of artifacts in play, uh, count their life, divide by two. If it's less than that number, ult Tez, win game. Yeah. You also got four copies of Force of Will. You actually got enough blue cards in the deck to where you can run the full suite to just give you insurance against all the decks that are trying to be faster. Yeah, the Force of Wills are mostly there for your game one combo decks, your your Belcher decks, your decks that are doing unfair things. Right. You want insurance against them. So when you play the deck like this, what are you looking to avoid in the metagame? You know, this deck looks like it preys upon the Delvers and stuff like that. What gives this type of strategy a hard time? Uh, the, the worst Delver matchup for you is probably American Delver, because they have cards like Wear Tear mm -hmm. in your sideboard, and losing your Leyline and your Chalice for three mana is pretty brutal. That, right. that That's actually what happens to me in the top eight of Eternal Weekend. But... Um, in terms of what you're trying to avoid, uh, Sneak and Show is a toss-up. If they have like the turn one Emrakul one, you don't have Ensnaring Bridge, you're going to lose. There's nothing right. you can do. But uh, the decks you want to see are the Delver decks, obviously. Uh, it's, I, in my opinion, I think it has a very good Miracles matchup. Mm -hmm. I played Reed Duke. Uh, one of the cards that is extremely good against Miracles in the deck is one of the lands, actually, Academy Ruins. Right. Uh, with Academy Ruins against Reed Duke, uh, I was actually able to cast Helm of Obedience four times in the same game, and he ran out of counter magic, and I was like, well, I did all I could do, <laughs> try to try to draw cards, because I had a uh, pre-game ley line of void, and he's like, well, that's uncounterable, yep. so you have that in play for free, and then just find Helm. So, so you just have infinite ways to get your stuff back with Academy Ruins, just grind out any deck that's looking to just play counter spells. Yeah, the, the, the Academy Ruins is there for the uh, counter magic. Uh, if they if the green-black green deck's playing Abrupt Decay, if they Abrupt Decay and Snaring Bridge or like a Thopter Foundry, right. you're able to recur it and get your combo going again. Yeah. You're just hitting people from so many angles with this deck. They have so many cards they have to worry about, and even if they manage to deal with them, you can just get them back so many angles this deck looks really sweet let's like a look at the sideboard you've got three toxic deluge what's the big uh, matchup for that uh toxic deluge is uh for your death and tax matchup where they have their revokers thalias stoneforge mystics uh game one your game plan against them is uh <laughs> well you, most of the time you they have no idea what you're trying right. to do because you're playing all these cards that they don't know what's going on. And Snaring Bridge, they have a really tough time with that game one because the only card that answers it is Flicker Wisp, right. game one. Um, and then, so your Deluges are for your creature decks, your Maverick decks, your uh, Death and Taxes. You can bring it in against the Blue-Red Delver decks, uh, blow it up for one, kill right. all the elemental tokens because Young Pyromancer still gets around the Chalice. They make a bunch yep. of one-one elementals and try to beat you down. Um, so that's for the creature decks, the Deluge. It's been super uh, good for me. Got a couple of Fluster Storms and some Vendillion Clicks. More Disruption, just... Uh, yeah, they're for the unfair decks, Fluster Storm. Fluster Storm is a fun one because even if you have a Chalice in play, it doesn't actually counter the copies. Ah. So you can still cast your Fluster Storm and you get the Storm copies and point the them at copies. things. Excellent. And then uh, clicks uh, for your show and tell. They cast show and tell. You click them, take what they're trying to show and tell into play. Or you can bring it in, in your, against your Stoneforge decks. It's the same aspect. Okay. You got the one of Engineered Plague. What you're really shooting for there? Elves? Uh, engineered Plague is for elves. It's also for the Delver matchup to kill all the young Pyromancer tokens. Okay. Um, it's also really good in the Infect matchup. Yep. Uh, that can be a rough matchup for you, especially game one, because they're a faster deck than you in most cases. Yep. 
Now, I said you uh, told me one of the changes you made from Eternal Weekend to this weekend is the Echoing Truth to help uh, deal with a couple problematic cards. Sure. Yeah, the Echoing Truth was the one change I made from the 75. Uh, the reason I did it is the increasing popularity of no rod and people's cyborgs. Um, so what you do is you get your combo set on the table of Leyline like Helm. Since no rods in play, you can't actually activate it but you're able to end a turn Echoing Truth, then activate it. Uh, it also is good killing elemental tokens, uh, goblin tokens it, against like Belcher or a Storm, and just uh, dealing with some problematic permanents like Pithy Needle or anything that you need to get off the table. All right, well the deck looks really sweet. You had a great success with it a few weeks ago. Let's see if you can have the same run here at Grand Prix New Jersey. Yes. All right. Well, Zach, Thank thanks for sitting down with me on the sideboard. Stay tuned all weekend long to StarCityGames.com for the action here at Grand Prix New Jersey.